Good afternoon, everybody. What, what we have um, um, going on this afternoon is that we have our initial preliminary analysis from the 2010 and 2011 fiscal status report um, from our county executive, Rob Astorino, that was given March um, 2010. And this is our preliminary analysis. On March 9th, County Executive Astorino presented the fiscal status report indicating spending growth of $116 million and a reduction of revenue that resulted in a projected deficit in 2011 of $166 million um, combined. And, and certainly we want to make sure that we uh, are, are recognizing that certainly in our current economic climate um, in our state where we have a seven to ten billion dollar deficit where we have situations in many municipalities where we, they are uh, struggling with their finances and states are uh, struggling with their finances and individuals struggling with their finances certainly we understand why people would look at a number like 166 million in 2011 and want um, to take uh, aggressive action based on how everything is going. But the point that we're trying to get across today, the, you know, the $166 million number is the absolute worst case scenario. And the questions that we have on the Board of Legislators being the Board of Directors for the $1.9 billion corporation that we call Westchester County is to make sure that the investments that we're making are the ones that are going to bring the right rate of return for the people of Westchester, the taxpayers. So we're really concerned about that number being so hard out there. Um, there's being decisions that are being made in individual departments um, because of that hard number. And quite frankly, the number is still slippery at this particular point in time. The county executive's financial status report shows the Department of Social Services um, with the spending increase of $21 million over the next year on the expense side. While the budget fact sheet that they also presented shows some savings in that same department of $5.8 million, $5 million of a reduction in cost. The $55 million cost increase on personnel. Now, we, we reviewed this with the budget and finance folks, and we've seen a few different things. First, it assumes that current contracts um, settlements are going to mirror the ones that they have currently. It's an assumption that those same contract settlements are going to be repeated. It assumes all positions are fully funded. In our current budget, all the positions aren't fully funded. It assumes a cost of living increase for all employees. Um, I'm sure in our difficult economic times um, that that may or may not happen, but it assumes that there's a cost of living increase. First, I want to point out again, if the, the current contracts are going to mirror you're not going to have current contract and a COLA. You're going to have one or, or the other. It also assumes a worst case scenario for pension and health benefit costs. Um, and that's in that $55 million on personnel. I'd also want to point out if we in Westchester County have approximately a $332 million personnel budget, that's uh, the, the number that we, we have, if it's a 4% increase on that number, that's $13 million. So $55 million seems just a bit you know, generous as far as the estimate is concerned. In the operations costs, we have a 5% increase in operating costs, $50 million. And that's assuming no cost containment by the administration. And we know that that's not going to be true. We, we certainly um, understand and expect the, the county executive is going to be managing those departments well and having um, expenses maintained in line. In 2009, the rate of inflation was 2%. So a 5% estimate in the uh, operating cost seems, again, a bit out of line. We have some potential opportunities that the, the budget didn't take into consideration. First, we have the FMAP dollars. Now, it's in the federal budget at $19.3 million is what we are expected to get in Westchester County, according to all of the analysis at the, the federal level. Um, someone could say, hey, it's not in there yet. Fair point. But it's certainly an opportunity. We got $32 million of FMAP money in the past. We don't have a reason to expect we're not going to get it. Uh, and again, we expect our great senators from the state of New York to help deliver that. The health care savings. Now, we are working on two different versions of the plan, but in the comprehensive health plan, according to Anne Marie Berg, in the presentation that the county executive delivered, that's a $20 million number if there's a, a shift to a company like NYSHIP. Certainly, the board is working on something on a comprehensive basis that would include many different opportunities, and that's without any contributions at all. 
So if there is any plan that develops at the end that has contributions, and, and certainly um, the board proposed one, and the county executive has one in, uh, that had one in mind as well, that number is only going to increase. So that's a minimum number at $20 million. And finally, in the particular budget projection of the $166 million, it didn't even include his savings. So whether or not we agree with all the savings from the Board of Legislators or not, the $16 million of cost savings aren't included in that big picture at all. So what we've been spending the time since March 9th doing is working with our budget um, department and the county executives uh, folks, whether it's the budget department, finance department, the various departments, and analyzing all the data that con is contained in that proposal to really get to the bottom line and understand what things have to be done. Our Budget and Appropriations Committee is going to begin on April 1st, and that's tomorrow, meeting with the departments, which it does every year. They bring in the departments and they have them talk about their budget, talk about how their actual um, performance is meeting against the, the budget projections and what things they see going forward in their departments, opportunities to save, things that the Board of Legislators and the County Executive together might invest in to help them reduce costs even further issue is not whether or not there are challenges. You know, we're in an economic time frame where we know that we have to do everything possible in working with the county executive to make sure that we are streamlining costs. That's the county executive's job and, and he's trying extremely hard and he's trying to deliver savings in those areas. Um, the second part is working with our state legislators to get additional flexibility in how we deliver those services because most of the time people don't recognize that how it happens with our state mandates is not just we have to deliver services, they also tell us how we have to deliver those services. And we have a joint legislative program with the county executive to go to Albany and to have some additional flexibility on items to give us some additional savings. If we, we look at a scenario and we say, you know what, we're gonna show you the worst case scenario right right now and make people scramble and do things that may be eroding some of the gains that we have made, that is a dangerous place to be. Now there's no question, again, people know that we're all going to do a belt tightening, we're all going to be streamlining, we're all doing things as efficiently as possible, but that doesn't mean you take out an ax and do it. Right? You, you go out there and you surgically remove, you evaluate those programs. Our budget staff is outstanding and the ability to look through every line of the, of the budget since we helped develop it and understand where there may be some opportunities to save. And again, you know, whether it's technology improvements um, or anything else like that, we have to look at that. I'll give you some other examples. We look at some consolidations and say, um, you know what, maybe we should consolidate departments, right? And the Board of Legislators through the Government Operations Efficiency Savings Committee is looking at two. One's in the Department of Transportation and the other one is in community mental health and health. And, and that's working with the administration that, that they've already had a preliminary analysis. We're waiting to receive that so we can do the additional analysis because the Board of Legislators by charter is the only one that can do that level of combination for a whole department. The county executive certainly could do it for an administrative level, so for commissioners. And we look through those and say, well, can we save on a budget person in community mental health and a budget person in health? Well, maybe there's a good reason for that. And when we do the additional analysis, we find out things like, well, you know what? Our auditors determined when they did our analysis in the past that if we combined it, we were not able to get reimbursed from the federal government or from the state government. That's why we in put them in individual departments because now you can track the dollars and get reimbursed for it. That's the kind of example of things that sound good on paper, but when you go through the motions and you really do the detail, you find out can't be executed that way. But those are the kind of things that we keep working through and we have to, it's a continual process. But at the end, we're all looking to do the same thing, which is to have uh, a, a county that has a safety net that has its services intact and has the people that are able to deliver those services at a cost that makes sense for the taxpayer.